So what's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. Just want to say thank you to all the new subscribers coming over. I really do appreciate it. But today we're going to talk about why you shouldn't buy land in order to run cows. Hey cows! Come on cow cows, come on! Come on cows! Come on cow cows, come on! Come on cows! And this might seem a little bit hypocritical me talking about this because we bought this farm in order to run cows. So I'm gonna go explain my logic, my reasoning for it, and hope you guys follow along. You see, here in East Texas, average land prices go for about $5,000 an acre right now. Actually, probably a little bit more than that, but we'll go with an average of about $5,000 because you know everything's rising up around the country right now. But $5,000 an acre is kind of just a good like median price for around here. But the reality is it doesn't matter if you're doing $2,000 an acre or $15,000 an acre in some places, okay? I'm going to show you from a financial point of view where this still applies. The normal way to run cows is in cow-calf pairs, especially around here. And the business model behind that is where you have a cow, she has a calf, you raise that calf up to weaning age, and then you sell that calf. That's just kind of standard practice. So we're going to do some cow math right now. We're going to do some math to calculate okay is it feasible is it worth it to do the average stocking density you know you kind of need about three to four acres per cow to carry it throughout the entire year so if you want to buy land in order to have one cow it's really close to four acres so we'll go off of that number okay you have to have four acres of land at five thousand dollars an acre that's twenty thousand dollars that you have to put into that cow for that land that's a lot of money and when I say it's a lot of money, I mean it's a lot of money, especially on the return that you're you're projected to get. Most calves around here sell for about $700 at weaning age. Of that $700, that's not all just pure profit. You know, you have to take into account, okay, the hay that you have to feed the cow to, you know, overwinter. You have to take into account any kind of losses that you might have, fence that you need to have built or in building, the cow in just depreciation of her over time because as she gets older, she'll become less productive and then needs to, you know, she's done. And we're not going to even get into the equipment cost of, okay, do you need an ATV? Do you need a tractor? Do you need a trailer? Do you need, you know, do you need to have them hauled for you? So all those expenses have to be built into those calves. And that's not talking, you know, any kind of, if you have to water them, water bill that you might have. It's not counting any kind of vaccinations or supplements you might give them. So a lot of that $700 that you're going to get gets kind of eaten up. So there's a lot of variable costs, whether you can, you know, get, get gifted a trailer or you know what, you rent a tractor or whatever. Okay, we're just going to go and just take the hay cost. Okay, because that's kind of standard really across the board, across the country, okay? A big round bale of hay goes for about $40. And to carry a cow over winter, you need about five rolls of hay. That's the average kind of, just kind of gauge. You know, to be safe, you need five rolls of hay. So we use the math of five times 40 is about $200. You need about $200, not including, you know, any kind of mineral feeder that you give them or kind of, you know, protein tub or whatever, okay? So we'll just, we'll just go with that. So you take that 700, you minus the $200. Now you're about $500 a calf. That's what your profit should be. If that was all pure profit and there was, you know, there's no other cost, there's no other kind of bills or anything associated with that, that $500, how many times do you have to do that in order to pay for the land that that one cow is on at $5,000 an acre? So it costs $20,000 in order to carry the cow and you're chipping it away at that 20,000 at $500, that's 40 years. Now you might say, oh, you know what, in you know 10 years, the beef prices are gonna be X amount, if, you know, and in another 20 years, it's gonna be more. And your, your payment or the land that you bought it for still is the same amount. And you could be right, but you don't go into a business and say, oh, you know what, in 20 years, this is gonna be profitable. I mean, if you wanna play the really long-term game, but the thing is, is that with business, it's not about, okay, is it profitable? Yeah, any business can be profitable in a long-term setting, but can you cash flow it? Can you cash flow that for the next 20 to 30 to 40 years to where prices of cattle jump to where it matches up with what you're paying for the land? 
The answer is probably no. And you also have to take into account the, the inflation rate and the price that the cattle prices increase are not the same. This goes up minimally, marginally, just a little bit, little bit, little bit by year, if any. Okay, inflation goes up, you know, 3% right now, it's kind of scary. So how much will it go up? You don't know. So with all that being said, why on earth did we get into the cattle business? I'll tell you this. And there's a couple main reasons. One, we're not playing the sale bargain game. None of our cows, none of our calves are gonna end up going to the sale barn. We're gonna sell from direct from the farm, directly to the consumer. That way we capture the whole the whole dollar of our beef. You know, we're not just making pennies. Cause ranchers, I mean, it's, it's really, they get shafted, man. They get shafted. They, in my opinion, have the hardest job getting the cow from zero to six months old and taking care of the mama. Then that cow goes to, you know, a, a finisher, a feedlot or something like that. There, they pump tons of, you know, corn, soybeans, whatever, into them. Then they ship them out wholesale to like a meat packer. They go dice them up and everything. And then the grocery store buys it from them. And the grocery store and the meat packer usually make the majority of the money. The ranchers make this much. So I said, uh-uh. I ain't playing that game. I feel, look, I have a marketing background. I know how to, you know, market products. That's what I do. I said, oh, okay, if we wanna get into the ranching business, if we wanna live this kind of lifestyle, we're gonna take that whole dollar. We're not gonna be able to capture every little bit of it. You know, we're not gonna be able to process it. It has to be USDA processing. So we're gonna pay a smidgen just to have it processed. And it's a little bit, but you know what? It's not a huge amount. That way, that cow over there, especially grass-fed, grass-finished Longhorn, way, 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 way more profitable than trying to sell it at a sale, sale barn. Now, is it gonna be a whole lot more work? Absolutely, it's its own business in and of itself, but you know what? It's worth it. The second advantage that we have, the second huge advantage, the second absolutely huge advantage that we have is because you, what you saw there is you saw a move, a cattle move from going from one paddock to the next. And when we do that, we do that every single day. They go around and they get a move every single day to where they're eating the freshest grass. What we're doing, and it's been, you know, you see this farm compared to any of the other ones in the area that just turn their cows out. We are easily, easily, easily doubling production. And when I say doubling production, I mean doubling the amount of grass that we're growing. So why is that big? Because now it doesn't take four acres to, you know, run one cow. We're at least, we've at least doubled production, so we're now to, down to two acres. So one cow costs $10,000 in land rather than $20,000. And plus on the back end, when we sell the meat, we're getting exponentially more than we would at the sale barn. So now essentially this land that we bought for $5,000 an acre or whatever it came out to be when we bought the house, because we've at least doubled production, now it only costs us $2,500 an acre. That's a steal. You talk about it, you, you say you get a $2,500 an acre land anywhere around here, everybody's gonna go, where did you find that? All we had to do was put in, you know, it came out to be about 25 bucks an acre of electric fence. I go two and a half minutes a day, move the cows, fill up their water, and they're done. Between the electric fence and the water line, we're able to double the production for 25 bucks an acre, rather than having to go buy more land at $5,000 an acre. $25 or $5,000? to get the same result. I'll take the $25 every other day. And that's just saying that if we double the production, I think we're a little bit above that right now. And you take, and you take a look at it from just the hay perspective. We took 13 cattle over the winter. We did not start feeding hay until it was January 17th. Most people around here start feeding hay in October. So now that hay cost got shrunk. We, we went through, I believe it was 17 hay bales for 13 head of cattle, and two llamas. And a couple of the hay bales I kind of messed up on and I kind of wasted more than I should have. So we're gonna call, count it as like, you know, $50. So we'll say it's a, a hay bale and a quarter. Instead of a cow costing us $200 to overwinter, they cost us $50. There's a big cost savings there. So my point in all this is saying, if you want to buy land, if you want to run cattle, if you want to live this kind of lifestyle, if you want to ranch, guess what? You're gonna to have to do one of two things, probably, hopefully both of them. Either find a way to get more for your cattle, and that could be a couple different things. You could raise some specialty stock. You could raise some registered animals. You could go and find the highest quality, the best of the best, where you know your bulls go for $10,000 or whatever. But that's also a lot more input cost, because you know what, in order to produce $10,000 bulls, you have to start probably with five, six, seven thousand dollar bulls and probably, you know, three, four, five thousand dollar cows. But my point is you have to find a way to get more than that seven hundred dollars 
for those cabs. Even if you take out the hay costs, even if it's just $700 that, you know, somehow your land is so productive and you're able to, you know, not have to feed hay the entire winter, which is extremely rare and almost unheard of, that $700 is still going to take you, what, like 29 years, I think I calculated it to be, for you to pay off the, pay off your land for it to be worth it? Doesn't make sense. But finding a way to get more for your animals is absolutely number one. Number two, how to get more out of your land. How to get it as productive as can be. We pay for it, we pay taxes on it. It has to be as productive as possible. So you know what? What we paid for it, what we pay taxes in it, doesn't actually come out to be so terribly much. But when you look at the economics of a small farm or a small ranch, it usually doesn't work out. That's why you always hear about them struggling. They're always, oh, you know what? At the co-op, every time I go to the co-op, oh, feed prices are up, cattle prices are down, woe is me. Well, you know what? Change, do something different. If it's not working, you know, the definition of insan insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result, right? Try something different, try something different. I know a lot of people are kind of really set in their ways. They've been doing it 40, 50, 60 years, and this is the way they've always done it. And that's fine, okay? but doing something to where you can actually make a living on the land. Hopefully this inspires more people to be able to get out of the city, get out and you know, get out of the, the desk job that they hate, get out of you know, being behind a cashier counter that you know, standing up for eight hours a day, that sucks. And they can get out here, breathe the fresh air, live a lot more peaceful, less stressed lifestyle in a way that, you know what, helps the land because it's being more productive. You get more for the cows, you're able to actually make a living on the farm. And if you look at our animals, they're all doing great. Okay, one of them, Daphne, right back there. She's a little bit thin and I'm watching her carefully. She's actually putting on a lot more weight. A few of you have mentioned in the, in the videos or commented saying that, hey, you know what, take a look at her, something's going on. She's actually putting on quite a bit more weight recently. I'm keeping an eye on her. That's why you see me, you know, that's one of the benefits of moving the cows every day. I get eyes on them at least minimum once a day, like right there in front of me. I try, especially with whatever she's got going on, I'm watching her really closely. Um, I'm on the left side to where I can see how indented her rumen is and see, okay, if she's putting on more weight. And I'm making a mental note of it every day. And a lot of days I'm actually taking pictures um, of her to see, okay, one day to the next. We're doing some stuff to see if it works and see if uh, we're able to get put on more weight. If and when we find something that does work, we'll pass it along to you guys, so keep an eye out for that. But my whole goal in this video was to show people, hey, you know what, you wanna get on the land? Okay, look at the finances behind it. You have to see, is it profitable? Is it worth it for you to do? Okay, in one way, maybe, maybe not. Probably leaning towards the 90%, 95% not because you just don't get enough money in order to pay for the land from your animals. The other way, absolutely yes, absolutely yes. On 30 acres, on 30 acres, we can make a full-time living just off the cows. The, not including the ducks that we have, not including the llamas that uh, we'll be protecting our alpacas that we're soon to be getting. That's, we can make a living on the cows. And that's what we want to be able to get to. That's hopefully what you guys can, you know, you guys is aspiring to be out here to get out of the city, do something different, you can see. You can do it. It's gonna take more work, it's gonna take more effort. You're gonna to have to sell direct to consumer or you're gonna to have to go some sort of high priced registered animals, which takes a lot more risk by the way. So I think I'm gonna cut it right here. Hit that subscribe button down below so you get notified when we put up new videos. Hit the like button because it really does help with the YouTube algorithm and drop a comment if you like, all right? Until next time, see ya, bye.